Technical T Rex, technical T Rex, the T in T Rex stands for technical. Do you I, want? I can answer the questions. I was there. All right, go ahead. All right, come on, hit me. Why do most uh, robots not guard their wheels? Oh, it's easy because they're way more valuable on eBay if they're damaged. This is not working out. We're going to send this to Technical T-Rex. All right, Technical T-Rex. Why don't all robots guard their wheels? I told you. I'm just going to, you know what? I'm answering all your questions anyway. Heck with it. Remember that all robots cannot weigh more than 250 pounds. So teams that decide to guard their wheels have to make a weight sacrifice to do so. Additionally, wheel guards can be a liability if they get bent and jammed into the wheels. Teams that have exposed wheels must design them to be robust enough to take direct hits from other robots. These teams choose to spend the extra weight elsewhere as armor or increase their weapon weight. How thick are the battle box walls? About tree fitty. The lower panels are one and a half inch polycarbonate laminate, while the higher panels are slightly thinner. Polycarbonate is the same material used in hurricane shutters and bulletproof glass. Why do BattleBots vary so much in size? I mean, some are huge and some are tiny. Some are compensating. Different bots allocate their weight in different ways. Some are large and airy, like Mammoth, and others are small and dense, like Copperhead. No matter what the design, they all have to adhere to the same weight limits. Small robots can have thicker armor and heavier weapons, while robots like Mammoth use open air to their advantage as armor, but spend a lot more weight in their frame to make it so large. How do drivers control the robots? Mind control. BattleBots requires that the transmitters must use digital spread spectrum communication, which are commercially available aircraft or car remote control products. Generally speaking, these controllers come in two formats, surface or pistol grip transmitters and air or joystick transmitters. Ultimately, the choice between the two options is up to the preference of each driver and how many things they need to control. It's true. What kind of batteries do you use in these robots? Potatoes are actually inside the battery. So you know those like um, you know, science fair projects where you make a whole bunch of potatoes? The most commonly used batteries are lithium polymer batteries because of their high energy density and low cost. Some teams, like Tombstone, use lithium iron phosphate chemistry which are slightly less energy dense but are more robust and less prone to fires. And you turn them into a battery. That's what people are doing in the robots. True story. Is this your job? And if so, how much do you get paid? <laughs> Although there is a small amount of prize money that is split among the teams, for most, this is a labor of love. The builders within the BattleBots community come from all walks of life, including plumbers, prison guards, engineers, and financiers. They compete because they like the challenge, not for any financial incentive. <laughs> Woo, that's, that, that, uh, what's the last question? <laughs> a lot of robots use different tires. Can you explain the differences between them? Uh, some suck and then the rest are ours. Some teams use rubber tires that are commonly used in go-kart applications and fill them with foam. These tires are very sticky and provide excellent traction, but are soft so they are compliant. Some teams mold their own urethane or rubber wheels over metal or plastic hubs to obtain custom sizes to work within their design constraints. These wheels are robust but can be heavy and are usually the most expensive option. Other teams are using commercially available tires because they are more readily available and are less expensive than the first two options. Thanks Technical T-Rex for always being there for us. We can always count on you. Never should have wrote that T-Rex that stupid jingle. <laughs>